Hello folks, welcome back to Introduction to Maritime Careers and Opportunities. This is week three, Vessel Types. I'm George Berkeley, your instructor. Looking forward to spending another 15 minutes with you here on Vessel Types. So it's the third program, third part of the program, and uh, we're going to look at the different types of vessels that are working out there in the Merchant Marine. When I think about vessels, I often think about their speeds and kind of seem to kind of seems to allow me to classify them by how fast they go. So we're going to look at tow boats. They're the slowest of the bunch, uh, usually eight knots. And you wonder, what is a knot? Well, I've given you some examples over here on the side. Knot is a nautical mile. It's about 6,000 feet, a little bit over. It actually is a, a nautical mile, one minute of arc of latitude along any meridian. So an arc of latitude the equator is the zero latitude going around the middle of our Earth. And it, if you imagine it has a line that goes into the center of the Earth, then if that line went up to the North Pole, that'd be 90. So here we got our L. And these things are arcing out from the center in each little increment from zero up to 90. Well, one degree of that arc of latitude along a meridian, which is our vertical longitudes, that equals a nautical mile. That's 6,000 feet. Matter of fact, if you took 6,076 feet and multiplied it by 90, you'd know how far it is from the equator up to the North Pole. But let's keep on moving. Okay, there's a great five-minute working uh, on the river video. It's done by AEP, which is Appalachian Energy Power, and they're a big coal mover on the Mississippi River. They move uh, coal with barges, and 35 barge toast, not uncommon. Big boats, big company, five minute video, definitely worth your time. Here's the Miss Shannon Gale, caught her down in Cameron, Louisiana. That's a shrimper. A lot of jobs in Louisiana on shrimp boats. Um, probably doesn't require more than a 100 ton license with the Coast Guard, but it does require a lot of experience to work on a fishing boat. The equipment that you see uh, here in these racks uh, are the uh, the nets and of course they have boards so as the vessel steams forward the boards get winged out by the pressure of the water and then uh, they uh, adjust the depth of them really by the time of day to find out whether the shrimp which are on the bottom during the day and come up to the surface at night and that's fishing for shrimp here's a harbor tug this is a castleman designed harbor tug it's a twin screw traditional harbor tug uh, that's the Allen. If we look in the background, you'll see a tractor tug. Once again, harbor docking tug. This is at uh, uh, in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and it is uh, probably up around PPG, uh, Valero, uh, or Sitco at the refinery uh, up near the I-12, uh, where I-12 goes right through, uh, uh, or I-10 rather, goes right through Lake Charles. Notice that it's a tanker. And uh, these are assist tugs. So this is called a ship assist tugboat. And the, uh, the one in the foreground is probably in that 3,000 to 4,000 horsepower range. And that one in the background is probably in that four to 5,000 horsepower range. The one in the foreground, the Allen, is twin screw. It means it has two propellers and it has rudders. And the harbor tug in the background is a tractor tug, which has two propellers, but they can turn 360 degrees and they're very maneuverable. Excellent boats. Those are harbor tugs. This is a different kind of tugboat called a seagoing tug owned by Crowley. I took this at the city docks in, uh, in all these pictures you see I took on a really good day in Lake Charles. Um, this is the ocean wind. She's used for anchor handling and for moving big rigs out to sea. They work in tandem or sometimes with three or four tugboats at a time of the same class. They're all linked together electronically, and they can move an oil rig out into the ocean over the wellhead, position it, put the anchors down, get the piece of equipment on site. Very important uh, piece of equipment. And Crowley, one of the largest maritime companies in the world. Very important U.S.-based company. Here's an inland tug with a tank barge. Probably, I'd guess, about a 1,500 horsepower towboat. Rather small one. And a 24,000 barrel oil barge taken at the Devil's Elbow in the intercoastal waterway. That is where 
the main in Lake Charles, that is where the intercoastal waterway crosses the Calcasieu River. And uh, you can see uh, a couple things here. In the background, we see uh, a response vessel. That's an oil response vessel, looks like, the Louisiana responder-type vessel. And, and behind that, if I look in the picture, I can see another larger towboat, and it's got four barges, and they're covered deck barges, probably have chemicals in them. Aha, here's the Nicholas from JAM, uh, which is a uh, company... They've got a nice dock on Pelican Island in Galveston. This is a ship that does uh, diesel delivery. That's their specialty. So they fuel people. It's a bunker barge. Um, they take fuel uh, to other towboats. So that's the Nicholas out of Houston. Once again, another smaller towboat, probably in that 1,000 horsepower range. Here's a 35 barge tow. Hull and coal. They're near Vicksburg on the Mississippi River. Looks like the river's running and kind of high. You see a lot of action on top of the river. Very important. And the most efficient way to move coal on earth, especially in a river, is to put it in a barge. It is the least expensive ton per mile for barge. For coal, that is. Aha! Another kind of towboat. Notice, just keeping an eye on our time, see here. Ah, we're six minutes into it. This is a 15-minute presentation. Articulated tug and barge. Another Crowley unit. Notice it has a barge that's shaped kind of like an oil tanker. And then the stern part of the barge has a tug that fits in a notch. And the notch has two pins that stick out into this barge. And it's an interesting system. It allows the tug to detach and go connect to another barge. So they can have multiple barges for the same tug. But honestly, I'm going to give you the truth of the matter. These rigs were designed to reduce manning because a tanker of that size would have to have more people on it than a tugboat connected to a barge. So really, ITBs pretty much are trying to get a regulatory exclusion so they can have a smaller manning crew and be a cheaper operation. They do have a practical benefit that they can detach from their barge. They have some of that, but most of them stay connected to their barge almost all the time. Hey, here's a pilot boat that's in Lake Charles, and the pilot is getting off the pilot uh, is getting off the ship and getting on the pilot boat. You can see the deck hand is down on the bow, and the pilot has decided to get into the upper boarding area. It's a Gladding Hearn pilot boat made of aluminum, goes about 30 miles offshore to meet ships such as these. That state commission's pilot gets on board the tanker and is an expert ship handler and will guide that ship down that narrow channel into the port. In this case, the pilot's already done the offshore part, so now he's going to get off the boat, another pilot went back up to relieve him, and the other pilot's going to take the ship to the dock. Hey, here's a Greek oil tanker. That's what they look like. Uh, black hull tanker, notice uh, loaded, it headed into Lake Charles on a Calcasieu in this case. Um, we see the orange lifeboats, uh, the distinguishing features, She's Greek. I can't pronounce the name of the ship. But this is an oil tanker. They're very uh, common. Uh, and, uh, they're essential for the economy of the United States. You'll find them on the Mississippi River and in Lake Charles. Container ships. American President Line container ships. 5,000 TEU ships. The, the, a TEU is a 20-foot equivalent unit. That means it's a 20-foot container. These ships carry about 5,000 of them. They're not the biggest container ships in the world. The biggest ones in the world carry 18,000 containers right now, and we're seeing ones that carry up to 20. They're much larger ships than this, but they go to this place. I wonder if any of you can recognize it. Yes, if you guessed San Francisco, you got it right. That's the Oakland Bay Bridge. And notice those spans there and that big hunk of concrete in the middle holding the bridge up. That's Charlie, that thing in the middle. And Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. This is uh, the two APL container ships meeting in front of the Oakland Bay Bridge span. Very interesting ships. I think you should know about them. Oh, you shouldn't know about this. A ground after a hurricane in Mexico. I can show you pictures of ships in trouble all the time, but I thought you'd get a, a memory jog out of this one. The ocean is still a terrible place and very challenging. But we don't have all the answers. So occasionally things go wrong, even for container ships, like the Alva Star. 
Okay, moving on. Here's a row row. Roll on, roll off. Military is very fond of these ships, and they've built ones just like this that have row row capability down below deck, and on top of the deck, they put containers. You can see the container crane there. They're really very, uh, they're great ships. We see a lot of them on the east coast of the United States. Um, they run up and down the east coast. They run to the Caribbean. Very popular. Good for heavy lift. Good for construction equipment. Uh, really good for, for uh, moving construction equipment around. Very well known for that. Aha! Uh -huh. One of my favorites, the liquefied natural gas ship. This is a Moss type ship. M-O-S-S, -S, named after the Moss shipyard that developed the spherical tanks. You see those round tanks? They hold the insulation around the other spherical tanks that have the liquefied natural gas in them that is really, really cold. We keep it at minus 160 degrees centigrade. That's almost minus 300 Fahrenheit. Brr! But we can't keep it cold the whole time, so that gas is constantly boiling off. And notice that pipe running along the top of those tanks. That catches the boil off. Most ships burn it as fuel in their engine. Some new ships can reliquify it through a process called liquefaction. And we also do this liquefaction here on the beach. So all the shale oil fracking gas that is coming out of the U.S. is a boom market for us. And we are now exporting this natural gas through our liquefaction export facilities here in Louisiana. And we have a number of them on the books. And our Federal Energy Commission is looking at approving a number of these sites so we can become the number one natural gas export state in the world. Aha! Uh -huh, here's another one. A dredge. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for maintaining the navigable depth of the waterway, in this case, on the Mississippi River. And that looks like the Wheeler to me. I can't tell for sure, but you'll see her often alongside the Mississippi River. Um, if you know the area, it's near the hospital. It's on the bank near Six Mile Bend by Audubon Park, kind of right next to Audubon Park. That's where the Army Corps of Engineers is. It's on the East Bank, and you'll see that ship when she's not working alongside their big long building that's parked right there. And this ship has a cutter head. That's the way a dredge works. They have a cutter head, and check our time 12 minutes. We still have about three minutes left. We're getting near the end. The cutter head spins, it sucks up the mud, and then they pump it out of pipe to an area where they want to put the dredged material. Here's another interesting one called a Stolt Tanker. It's a chemical ship. Very high-tech ship full of, uh, full of tanks that are made of stainless steel. They can carry lots of different kinds of chemicals. Very important for the economy of Louisiana. Hey, well, that's the end of our ship types. I'm going to prepare a quiz for you. Hopefully, I'll figure out how to get you so that you could connect with me on, on, uh, on Canvas so we can understand how to do these quizzes. But I'd like you to be able to look at these ships and know what they are and say, that's a chemical ship. That's a container ship. That's a row row. That's what's really important. So I hope you can ID them. If you can't, watch this video again. Bye.